burning fire. Now, he loves people. He hugs people. But every time he hugs somebody because he loves them so much, they burn up incinerated. <laughs> so, Bergman has a problem, right? right? What is his problem? He loves people. People love him. But he can't intermingle with them because if he intermingles with them, he burns them up and they just like, oh, I lost another friend, right? <laughs> So this is what Vernon has to do. He has to create a way that he can be friends with people without destroying them. Wow. You understand? Yeah. So this is why God created things like the like a, a sanctuary. This is why God created praise because God God is a consuming fire. Yeah. He wants to mingle with you. He wants to 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 talk to you. He wants to come down and but God is a consuming fire. So therefore, for him to be able to, to dwell among men, he had to create a place and a way that men could become close to him without them being completely destroyed. Wow. Let's go to uh, Leviticus uh, chapter 16. It's God. I like when God says, just do it my way, it'll be better. <laughs> um, Leviticus chapter 16. Now watch this. Because God really wants you to understand something. I gave you praise and worship. I gave you praise for your benefit. God is El Shaddai. You know what El Shaddai means? All sufficient. He don't need you for anything, really. He existed before he decided to invent angels or people, okay? Amen. He is El Shaddai, which means all sufficient. That means basically everything that I need is within me, yeah. right? Right. So, if God created praise and worship and he's not a selfish God, that means he created praise and worship for you. Amen. Okay? It's not for him. See, we should rush in during praise, during the time of praise, because God created that for us. Amen. You understand? So, because I mean, I may need some things in my life. I may need some intervention in spiritual matters that are going on that I don't even know about in my life. So I need to rush in to praise and worship. Because during that praise time, I may get my answers, and I may get my prayers answered, because God can inhabit that atmosphere. Now watch this in Leviticus chapter 16. It said, The Lord spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron who died when they approached the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the brother, uh, your brother Aaron not to come whenever he chooses into the most holy place behind the curtain in front of the atonement cover. Uh, on the ark, or else he will die. Now, what had happened was that these two guys decided to go in and just talk to God. They went. <laughs> they just went inside the altar, and they just like, hey, let's go on the altar and offer up a, a, an offer of fire to God. So they just walked right inside the holy of holies and just said, hey, God, how you doing? And Burned up, right? And God said, ooh, I better make some rules. <laughs> because the people can't just walk up in here. So he said, look, we're going to change this whole thing. Okay? So he said, look, he said, because I appear in a cloud over the atonement seat. This is how Aaron is to enter the sanctuary with a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He is to uh, put on the, the, the sacred linen uh, uh, tunic with uh, linen uh, undergarments next to his body. He is to tie the linen sash around him and to put on the linen turban. Uh, this, these are sacred garments. So he must um, bathe himself with water before he puts on uh, puts them on and it says for the Israelite community he is to take two male goats so he's given them all these things okay 
that he has to do before they can actually come inside the sanctuary and deal with God. Okay? Amen. God comes inside of you and he dwells inside of you when you accept Christ. You know why the Holy Spirit can come inside of you when you confess and accept Christ? Because the blood cleanses you of all sin. Amen. So once you are cleansed, the Holy Spirit can come in. You understand? Yes. And now you are, you are in charge of that temple once he comes in to keep that temple pure and to keep that temple in regulation to God's law, right? Amen. If you sin inside of the temple, what happens? A sin offering has to be offered up, Amen. okay? A sin offerings are mandatory. So you, God says if you sin inside the temple, you must repent. So if someone sinned, they would bring a sin offering. Because God is setting up a way, i got to keep you clean and pure because if I'm going to deal with you, I'm a holy God, and the only way I can deal with you is if, that, if you're holy and also. Amen. Okay? So God doesn't, didn't set up repentance so that he can prove himself right and he can humble you. You understand? Amen. God doesn't say, okay, look, you know, ooh, you wrong, you, you messed up again. Yeah, come to me and say you sorry. Uh -uh. That's not God. That would be selfish, right? Amen. That's selfish attitude. God set up repentance so that you can keep your temple clean. Amen. You understand? Amen. And so all sin offerings are mandatory. There are some free will offerings. Praise, praise is a fellowship offering. It's volunteer. You can come in and praise God if you want. If you want to take advantage of, of praise, you don't have to. It's not mandatory. But if you come in and praise, you're going to get the benefits yeah. of the praise. Amen. Sin is a mandatory offer. If you sin inside of your temple, it is mandatory. It was mandatory that they had to bring an offering for the sin offering. Or else they were cut off from the fellowship. You understand? Amen. So sin offerings are mandatory. This is all that is going on inside of you. We talked about you being a priest last week. So you have to understand how you are, or, or you are going to operate inside of your body because the Holy Spirit's living there. Amen. Okay? Amen. So, here you have and you, and you, the understanding here that God is trying to set up a system so that he can be a part of your life without you being destroyed. Amen. Okay? And he set up a system how to bless you, okay, and how you can approach him so that you can be blessed. Now, let's go to uh, Job. Because I want us to, I mean, when we get raptured, I want us to all be raptured in victory, okay? Amen. I don't want anybody going, oh, thank God, the rapture came. I want to go make it. <laughs> I want everybody to be like, I was winning and I was ready to go. You understand? Yeah. You don't want to, you, I mean, we want to leave here in victory. Yeah. You understand? Amen. Yeah. So in Job chapter 38, let's go there. It says this, and God is talking to Job. It says, Then the Lord answered Job. Um, uh, he answered Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that darkens my counsel with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. He's talking to Job. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off the dimensions? Surely you know, Job. Mm. Who stretched out the measuring line across it? On what were the footing set? And or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy, it says, who shut up the sea behind them? So he's asking Job, look, Job, when the morning stars came together, when the, when the stars came together, and these stars are the angels, because remember a third of the angels uh, failed. A third of the stars failed. Yeah. Okay? 
These, this, these stars are angels. He said, when the stars came to me in the morning to sing, where were you? When the angels rejoiced before me, where were you? Now, why is it that these angels had to come and sing before God? You understand? Why did they have to come and sing before God? Now, let's go to um, Ezekiel. Because, see, you have to understand, angels are created beings. You understand? Amen. So, God has to set up a way for them also to be in his presence. Okay, understand? Some angels can be in God's presence, but as when I studied angels, when I studied that there are cherubim angels, there are seraphim angels, there are guardian angels, there are scroll angels, there are throne angels, and I just named a few, but there are many different types of angels. There were only seraphim angels were really allowed to actually be in the presence of God. And throne angels are allowed to be in the presence of God. But all the other angels were not allowed to be in the presence of God. Not to just walk in and be in his presence. But archangels, which are seraphim, like Michael and Gabriel, they could just be in the presence of God. But all angels were not allowed to be in God's presence. So God had to create a way for them to also be able to feel his presence even though they are not seraphim angels. So God created something for them. And what he created was praise and worship. And he placed Lucifer above as, a, as an angel over this. Okay? Now, let's read in... Uh, 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 Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 11 so we learn some things. Amen. It says, it says in verse 11 of Ezekiel chapter 28 it says the word of the Lord came to me son of man take up a, a, a lament concerning the king of Tyre and say to him this is what the sovereign Lord said you were the model of perfection. He's talking about Lucifer. Full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you. Rubies, topaz, emeralds, chrysolite, onyx, jasper, sapphires, turquoise, I don't know how you pronounce that, turquoise, turquoise, um, braille. He said, your, your setting and your mountings were made of gold. On the day you were created, listen to that. The scripture says that Jesus Christ created all things and without him there was nothing made that has been made. So God, Jesus Christ created all angels and Lucifer just happened to be one of them. Okay? So this is not a great big battle like God against the God. He's an angel. He's going to get whipped and he knows it. Okay? Amen. It says, on the day you were created, uh, 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 they were prepared. You were, you were anointed as a guardian cherub, so I ordained you. Now, he is a guardian. A guardian it means I'm going to put you in charge of something. Okay? So he puts Satan in charge over the sanctuary, over the worship. Let's continue to read, okay? You were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. It says, through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you into disgrace from the mount of God and expelled you O guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones, your heart became proud on, on account of your beauty. And you corrupted your wisdom. Okay? Oh, this, I want to I emphasize this. Don't corrupt your wisdom. How do you corrupt your wisdom? When you come up with your own doctrine and theology about God. 
He corrupted his wisdom. He already knew God's wisdom, but he's going to make up his own. Okay? So you don't corrupt your wisdom. Because of your splendor, so I threw you to the earth. I made you a spectacle. I made a spectacle of you before kings. By your, by, uh, by your many sins, you dishonest, um, you dishonest trade, you have desecrated your sanctuaries. Now, what sanctuary? Okay? You desecrated your sanctuaries. It says, then he starts telling them how I'm going to, so he made a fire within him that's going to consume him and burn him in the end. But now he said, you desecrated your sanctuary. What sanctuary? The sanctuaries that I gave him to be guardian over. You are guardian over the sanctuary that is in heaven. Let's go to um, Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. So Satan is given charge as a guardian angel. He's, he's in charge of what? The sanctuary of heaven. He's in charge over what? The music that's in heaven. God placed him and made him beautiful and perfect in all his ways to do this job. Your job is to bring the praise and worship to me so that when the angels worship me, I can come and inhabit their praise. Amen. Understand? Yeah. So they can feel the presence of God. Yeah. Okay? So, because it's a big thing to be in God's presence. Amen. You understand? If only seraphim angels are in God's presence, I mean, for them to talk to another angel and go, oh, I was in the presence of God yesterday. And oh, it was so beautiful. Hallelujah. It just felt like I was in paradise. It's like, it was just awesome, you know? And the angel, other angels are like, man, I would love to feel that, right? They would be jealous of that. Right. So God really just created a way, say, I want to create a way that I can that I can inhabit and everybody can feel my presence at once through praise. 